that takes me back to the original question that I'd asked you before about the uh, the skin whitener because one of the conclusions that a lot of blacks have arrived at is that they can make more money by lightening their skin and some people are absolutely convinced of that even though it has tremendous health consequences you know so how do how have we gone so far into thinking that by making blacks white that that's a good thing and many people are doing it the honorable minister louis farrakhan coined the phrase that he who prescribes the diameter of your knowledge controls the circumference of your activity which means whoever teach you know how far you're going to go and with the skin lightning the standard of beauty has been made white when they brought our forefathers over here, they subjugated us, subjugated us with the, the white image of Jesus and told us when you see the son, you see the father, which made us hate, us hate ourselves. So if God's white and I'm black, then I must be devil. So then you have angel food cake. Angel food <laughs> cake is white. Devil food cake is black. <laughs> so you have this, and if you get put out of a club or something, you get blackballed. You have a bad day on Wall Street, you call it a Black Monday, it could be a Friday. So anything that has to do with black is made evil or bad or, or wrong, even in, in electricity. The ground wire is black, so you, you keep that low. <laughs> so if you have a people constantly enforcing the supremacy of color on you. It produces in that person who is black self-hatred. So you want to be um, good or right or Fair. righteous, <laughs> you want to be white. So in Nigeria, I heard about this years ago, the rage in Nigeria is skin like. They want to be closer looking to their oppressor so they can feel, so they won't be discriminated against. In Louisiana, they used to have what the brown paper bag test. If your, your skin color is darker than this brown paper bag, you can't come over on this side of town. So this has always been indoctrinated into the, the culture of America and the culture of Western civilization. And on that, I, I just add to this, add to that, that the um, whole mind state of divide and conquer by the European, it, it, they have to do that. They have to do that. Because to have true integration, they would disappear. They're genetically inferior to the black man. So they can't have really true integration. If you say, let's integrate, we say, okay, sure. A hundred years from now, where are you? They're gone. In order to stay on the planet, they have to stay with themselves. They know that they are a minority on the planet. In order to stay in power, you got to keep the majority confused, discombobulated, <laughs> wondering what's going on, fighting and killing each other. You, you, you have to do that. They, they have to do that. But, well, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, let me add on. I got a little, little, little twist here. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have a European person impregnates um, an African woman mm -hmm. and through time yes the uh, kid is going to be darker and dar uh, I mean the African gene is going to be dominant mm -hmm. so but that's just the color of a skin because you're going to learn both you're going to learn from both sides of of, of parents mm -hmm. you know so uh, the European uh, mindset or ideologies or experiences and the African experiences are going to be both in that kid. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, you can't really say that one side would be annihilated or the other side would be annihilated because the... I'm glad you brought that up. There's, I can't remember the name of the, is it Algeria? That settlement we sent from America? Liberia. 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 That experiment. <clears throat> um, these were all mulatto people who were sent from America to Liberia. And the indigenous people or the dark people of Liberia, they treated like the blacks, the whites treat the blacks in America. So it's the same mental mentality that we carry, we carry the mind of our oppressor everywhere we go. A new mind has to be introduced to us. Mm -hmm. As long as we got in our head white is white and black is wrong or white is superior and black is inferior. I don't care where you go on the planet. If you hate yourself, right. every time you see yourself, you're going to spew hate. And if you love your oppressor, then every time you see your oppressor, you open, you got open arms. So, in that experience, experiment in Liberia, we <coughs> have a lot of people enslaving black people in Liberia. This is, it's a mental thing. This is the way, as brother was teaching on, about how Adam, um, power and rule and domination on the planet, his whole mentality passed on to his offspring. So they're keeping with that same pace. Um, white supremacy has to die <coughs> for humanity to live. Black inferiority has to die before humanity can live. There's no separating the two. You can't do it. You can't ha have both of them in existence. You have to abolish both. You can't have somebody thinking they're superior because they're white. <coughs> you can't have somebody thinking they're inferior because they're black. This is the whole race card or, or, or system that's been set in place to divide, to divide and conquer and keep those in power in power. Like you were saying about the clip with the, um, the whites that were calling in to C-SPAN and they were expressing discrimination. That whole mentality of I'm being held back because I'm white, they don't take into it consideration that everything they got is because they're white. This whole country you have is because you're white. The education you have is because you're white. The money you have in your pocket you have because you're white. I read a paper here recently that everybody is, you know, back into the Indianapolis Colts. Colts are going to be opening up a uh, training camp here pretty soon. And we're going to be rooting for the Colts. When the ultimate warrior was Little Turtle, and he's never put in that context. You know, that's part of um, <clears throat> growth to, to understand who we are today and where we are psychologically, isn't it? I mean, and, and being able to process what happened in the past and see it today in a current context. I'll say again, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that history is best qualified for our research. And when the uh, Caucasian was in the Dark Ages, they had lost the knowledge of themselves until the Moors or the Muslim men in Syracuse came to re-educate them in, in Europe. They had to bring them back that which they lost. They lost a great history of what they done in Greece and, and Greek. They lost all that history. So when they gave them back their history, they had self-pride, self-esteem. They became self-aware. <coughs> They wanted to do something for themselves. So, by honoring Little Turtle, it will put pride, self-esteem, the vigor to fight in the children of the conquered. 
So if you want to continue ruling, you don't want to give them, the slave or the, the people you conquer, anything that's going to cause them to rise up against you. And this is the reason why certain histories are wrote out of history. Because it it uh, quickens something in your DNA that something's not right here. So in any uh, nation that has come to power out of unrighteous means, you don't ever want to have the history of what you've done on a constant <laughs> reel that everybody can see. You want to put out what you feel is best for the growth of the society in which you're trying to produce. Anything that's bad or negative or that will spark revolution in, in your society, you want to try to hide. So that's the problem with it. Everything here in this country has been brought about through unrighteous means, and you don't, they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about the, what happened 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, 500 years ago. They don't want to talk about that because they have to come to grips with what they did, and they don't want to do that. So I'll say this. America, right now, is in so much debt that revolution is inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's here. And here in Indiana, everything is being privatized. It, like, I think one of you all was talking, welfare is privatized. All the social programs is privatized now. So that's giving private companies or corporations power over the citizens of this, of this state. And that's revolution. That's going to take place because um, the debt in this country is so huge. When the, the fall of the dollar happens, there will be revolution in the streets. And you don't want people studying <laughs> past histories. <laughs> of what was done in the past. You don't want that kind of mentality on the street. You want a, a mentality that, okay, we, as we were saying earlier, um, go along to get along mentality. You won't have a go along to get on mentality if the truth was made known. 